Hey everyone and welcome to Medvise TV where pharmacists like myself give you the information you need to better manage your health and medications. Today's topic, we're going to talk about the EpiPen. And joining me today, we're going to have Rory the Second. It's our little Miami Heat mascot, unofficial mascot here. So I'm doing this video because I want to help make caregivers, parents, teachers, and other healthcare providers, I want to make them feel more comfortable with using an EpiPen. Now, after watching this, I don't want everyone to feel like an expert and just start stabbing everyone with epinephrine. This is just mainly to help make people a little bit more comfortable with using an EpiPen. So let's get started. Epinephrine is usually used in the case of a severe allergic reaction. However, there are some allergic reactions where only an antihistamine is needed. For example, if someone is just having hives or a simple skin reaction, sometimes an antihistamine like Benadryl um, is only what's gonna be needed. However, epinephrine is needed for more severe life-threatening allergic reactions. And some of those symptoms include confusion, dizziness, tingling of the mouth, tongue, um, or throat, or tightness of the throat, shortness of breath, just to name a few. There are a few types of epinephrine auto-injectors that are available. One is the branded EpiPen, and then there's some generic uh, epinephrine auto-injectors available as well. But today we're mainly gonna talk about the EpiPen uh, because they're the only ones that sent me a trainer to use. Now, even though they, are, they both contain epinephrine, they are different in the way that you inject them and in the way that you prepare them for injection. And because they're different, you wanna make sure when you get your prescription for epinephrine auto injector, whether it's the brand or the generic, they'll all come with a trainer. If not, make sure you get a trainer ordered directly from the manufacturer and practice with that so you're familiar with how you're gonna inject your EpiPen. So let's go over some general tips. When you're picking up your prescription for an EpiPen, before you leave the pharmacy, check the box for the expiration date and make sure it's got an expiration date of at least one year. You should store your EpiPens uh, at room temperature, don't leave them in the car, they don't need to be put in the refrigerator. Any extreme uh, differences in temperatures, whether it's too hot or too cold, can actually ruin the medication. So make sure you always keep it at room temperature. There are two different types of branded EpiPens. There is the regular EpiPen, and then there is an EpiPen Junior. And these are gonna be color coded. The EpiPen is gonna be in a yellow box, and those are for uh, larger kids, teenagers, and adults. And then there's going to be the EpiPen Junior, which are for smaller kids. The EpiPen Junior usually comes in a green box. Each of them are prescribed based on the weight. So there are some children that, uh, because of their weight, might need the adult version of the EpiPen. And there are some older kids that might need the EpiPen Junior based on their weight as well. Every box of EpiPen now comes with two pens inside. Whether it's the EpiPen or the EpiPen Junior, it will have two pens inside that box. Having two pens is important for multiple reasons. So each EpiPen is a one-time use only. Sometimes there can be an accidental discharge of a pen, in which case you'll definitely want to have a backup. Also, if there was a pen that was accidentally ruined because it was left in the car or put in the refrigerator or freezer, it's another reason to have a backup. Finally, one of the most important reasons it's gonna be important to have uh, two EpiPens available is because there are some people that after the first administration of an EpiPen will actually need a second dose because symptoms haven't resolved. So if you or your loved one are experiencing a uh, severe allergic reaction and symptoms haven't resolved after the first injection, you have to wait at least five minutes to be able to give that second dose, but it's okay. There are some people that will need a second dose of an EpiPen injection if their symptoms have not resolved uh, after the first injection. Now, there are some children uh, that go to school with EpiPens, and it's probably important to double check on the policy of your child's uh, school uh, because you wanna make sure that they have the best possible plan in place uh, to get an EpiPen administered uh, in case of an emergency. There are some schools that require the teacher to keep one in the classroom and then another one uh, at the nurse's office. Um, some children or some parents do want to have their kids have that one EpiPen at least with them at all times. So uh, just make sure that you guys have a, a plan in place in case of an emergency. But whatever your plan may be for your child, just make sure that it involves having two EpiPens available. So there was a recent scandal about the prices for EpiPens skyrocketing. And uh, it did affect some people, but most insurances still cover the EpiPen. And there's also some coupons available directly from the manufacturer online. If the price is an issue for you, there are generics that are available. And there's some compounding pharmacies that can make these uh, specifically for you at a fraction of the cost. Now, let's prepare this thing for injection. Every EpiPen actually has a little window. It's a viewing window where you can actually look at what the, the, the liquid or the medication inside looks like. Now this is a trainer and uh, it does not have that window. 
I was not able to get a real EpiPen here because I don't have a prescription for it, but uh, I'll probably include a picture of what that's gonna look like uh, in the video. Now, every, every EpiPen has a viewing window which you can actually look at that medication. That liquid should be clear and should not have any sort of color or particles uh, or any sort of cloudiness to it. If you do see that on there, that, that pen may have been damaged. If you or you're near someone that's having an allerg a severe allergic reaction, and you know they're having an allergic reaction, and they might need an EpiPen, and you look and that EpiPen appears to be damaged by that viewing window, and there's no other EpiPens available, still use that EpiPen, because it's gonna be best to use that one even though it's damaged medication and still for that person to get some epinephrine into their system than using no EpiPen at all. Now EpiPens uh, usually come in in a, in a enclosed case and it's gonna be color coded. Again, it's gonna be yellow for adults and green for smaller kids. Make sure to take it out of the case. I don't have that case to be able to demonstrate that with you again because that only comes with a prescription. Um, and I only have this trainer here. Now when you get that pen out of the case, you're gonna wrap your fingers all the way across the body of that of that pen creating a fist. Make sure, it's important to make sure your thumb is wrapped around there creating a fist around this pen because if your thumb is up here, one, you might forget to remove that blue cap, which I'll talk about in a second, or if you're holding it the wrong way and your thumb is up here, you might actually accidentally inject yourself. So you're gonna have the blue tip to the top and the orange to the bottom. The orange part's gonna be what gets injected. Easy way to remember that is blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. So now that we're ready to inject, the one of the most important steps we're gonna do right before injection is gonna be removing this blue cap. If you don't remove this blue cap before injecting, no medication is gonna be delivered. In fact, you're not even gonna be able to, like that needle is not even gonna pop out. See, no matter how hard you hit, nothing's gonna happen if that blue cap is not removed. So now that that blue cap has been removed, we're ready to inject. Now, if someone is having an allergic reaction, whether it's yourself or uh, you're giving it to a loved one, you, you don't, it does not need to be injected to bare skin. This is actually designed to go through clothing. It could even go through jeans. Now, when injecting, you don't need like a full swing, um, but you do need to get like a, like uh, for lack of better, for lack of better words, a stabbing motion. Um, to for that injection. So where we're gonna inject is gonna be in the outer thigh, the outer upper thigh, okay? Nowhere else, not the butt, not someone's finger, not the arm, shoulder, no. Injections of an EpiPen should always be in the upper thigh. So, couple things here. You heard that click, right? I hope, I hope the microphone picked it up, but you should hear a click upon injection. If you did not hear that click, you did not properly administer that EpiPen injection. So one more time, let's see if we can hear that click. <laughs> Heard the click. After you hear that click, with meaning that the injection was successful, you wanna leave it in there. Per the EpiPen manufacturer, you wanna leave that pen um, injected into the thigh for three seconds. Remove and then make sure to massage or rub the area for another 10 seconds. As mentioned earlier, there are some people that will require a second dose if symptoms haven't resolved. But again, do not give that dose um, unless five, at least five minutes has passed. And you could also give it any interval after that, but five, at least five minutes has to pass before that second dose. If after a second dose has been administered to someone having a severe allergic reaction, it's only recommended that a healthcare professional administer any further doses if a third or more dose is needed. Again, the EpiPen is epinephrine and epinephrine is adrenaline. So after giving an injection, uh, there will be side effects of increased adrenaline, like increased heart rate, a little bit of jitteriness and other side effects associated with adrenaline. Now, one thing I did wanna mention about uh, administering EpiPen injections is sometimes you might not be sure if someone actually needs an EpiPen injection or not, but if you're unsure, it probably is gonna be best to give it. Um, it's better to give it and you know them really not need it than to not give it and they really needed that epinephrine injection. So the cool thing about the branded uh, EpiPen is after injection, you will not see a needle uh, popped out of here. Um, and that's in comparison to some of the other uh, generic epinephrine auto injectors. After injection in some of those generics, you will there will be an exposed needle. So now's a good time to talk about the uh, other options that are available as the generic epinephrine auto injectors. Just like the EpiPen, the generic auto injectors also have two different doses, one for uh, adults and one for children, and they will also be color coded. Now there are some differences. The generic auto injectors have two caps actually. There's gonna be, uh, some of them are, are, I think they're blue caps. They're gonna be a blue cap on the top and a blue cap on the bottom. 
Now, the main difference is in terms of the caps is you have to remove both those caps in order to give that injection. Uh, and that's in contrast to the EpiPen here, whereas there's only one cap to remove. So make sure that if you have the generic, you'll know that there's two caps that you have to remove before the injection. Now, one of the other differences between the uh, brand EpiPen and the other generics is the generics, instead of having this orange here, it'll actually be a red tip. And that red tip is gonna be what's injected into the thigh. And one of the last major differences is uh, how you actually inject this into the thigh. Now, for the branded EpiPen, um, again, you, you do have that, that type of stabbing motion, whereas with the generics, you actually first place the red tip to the thigh, and then you press down um, to, to get that injection. And so there's a little difference in the way you actually administer it um, in the brand versus the generic. And for the generics, it's required that after when you inject it, you, you do have to hold it down for 10 seconds. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as usual, please do not start or change the way you take any medications without first talking with your pharmacist or prescribing physician. If you have any other questions about EpiPens or the generic auto injectors, please feel free to shoot me an email. You can reach me at richard at medvives.com. Thanks for watching, take care.